Hi, so uh, <clears throat> today I'm going to be showing you how you can uh, maybe get a little more light out of your LED grow lights. Um, I bought one online on Amazon. Uh, it's supposed to be a thousand watt. I think it's supposed to be like uh, three watts per bulb on this one and it's got uh, two types of bulbs to cover the spectrum for the two light frequencies for uh, growing and flowering. Um, <clears throat> And the only thing, uh, having read some books, is that one of the things you want to do whenever you're using lighting is to remove any glass between your bulbs and your and your actual flowers. Well, this comes in a very sturdy case. It was certainly well built, but it comes with this, which, as you can see, it's got a glass cover on it, which really is unnecessary as long as you're careful of what you're doing. Um, and basically can lead to generating more heat, which would shorten the life of your LED bulbs anyway. And obviously any of that heat is uh, directly re reducing the amount of light that's being transmitted to the leaves of your plants. So, uh, the task for today is to remove the actual glass insert. I've taken off the, uh, the cover, it's basically six, uh, sorry, eight screws around the edge. Here and here, one here, one here. And then once you're into that, there are just this the other side of this is a big heat sink and there were just four screws holding that heat sink in they were very easy to take out and then gently lift this whole thing out i didn't have to undo any wiring or anything it just comes out as a going concern leaving you just with this cover now one of the things that they've got is a bit like a picture frame it's got these metal tabs here that you want to pull up and they just use some of this kind of bathroom resin kind of stuff so I'm just taking a big old flat bladed screwdriver and just kind of working my way along taking those out and then once I've got all of the goop eased up around there and got the uh, got the other tab here you can see I'll use the screwdriver it's a bit more than my finger wants to do but uh, careful not to break the glass you get the idea just lever it up out of the way that's it and then uh, I'll pause the video here and show you once I've got the glass out okay so we're back a few minutes later managed to work loose the uh, glass on three sides it was quite a fight uh, it was glued in uh, more securely than I would have believed, but uh, some work with a uh, trusty old flat bladed screwdriver from this side and then gently from the other side. And once I got a corner where I can get in under, went and raided the old cutlery drawer to some nice blunt knives. And basically you can then get in kind of behind the glue, work it out gently until you break the seal. The main problem is the glue liked to stick to the edge of the glass and uh, gave it quite a lot of adhesion. Once I broke that, I could gently move it free. So, uh, pause that there. Now, they do say that necessity is the mother of invention. I was having quite a lot of difficulty with that glue and I found the perfect tool. One of these little razor blade scrapers worked absolutely perfectly. It was a lot less fight once I used this. I could just uh, basically get it in and run it down the glass. And uh, you can see why it was so difficult to get out. Look at all that glue residue. But anyway, we've got the glass out now. Point of note, you don't want to take any of this glue out. You want to leave it in the frame because it does have a secondary purpose. It acts as an insulating layer between the frame and the circuitry because if you look we've actually got that would be a live circuit and i'm guessing you'd be getting whatever the voltage has been stepped down to but a fair bit of current given that this is rated at i think it's 135 watts which is you know it's a, that's a pretty good uh, good amount of power if you got shocked with that you certainly know about it for the rest of the day probably wouldn't kill you if you got a decent uh, trip circuits in your house but uh you really don't want to be touching it. And also, point of note, when we put this back in without the glass, you don't want to be touching the underside of this. These 
would all be live where these capacities are. So this is very much a hack. You do so at your own risk. It is an electrical hazard. So uh, there's a reason why you put the glass in there. But I'm willing to take the risk on the understanding that if I get the shock, it's going to be shocking myself. And that uh, I'm going to be getting uh, more direct light straight out of these LEDs down to my plants instead of wasting it heating up a big old piece of glass which you know I guess it's kind of nice to have a, a heater built in but uh, I would just as soon have the light source I've got enough heat where it is anyway and uh, so now the light that uh, panel that glass panels out I'll reassemble it all and we'll have a go see if I uh, still got a working panel so I just put in the last of the four screws in Securing the heat sink back into the into the base that I took the glass out of. Point of interest, this unit, although being a little overpriced, now I've looked online and seen some other deals I could get. I've got to say, I really can't complain at the build quality. Look at that heat sink. That is a serious heat sink. That's going to be sucking the heat off. We've got two big old fans there that uh, obviously going to keep that uh, heat sink cooled down. And this bad boy is not messing around. We've got three LED power supplies on this thing. It's all nicely, all the wires are nicely done. It's all insulated. I've got no problems with that at all as an electrician. I would say that would pass muster under my watch. So the construction of this thing is uh, the real deal. I will continue with my assembly. Now, one of the tips I'll give you is that it was quite hard actually getting it back into its base box. But then I realised the smart thing to do is just to hover it over it using its mounting uh, bracket, which is quite nice. It came with it. It uh, clips on nice and easy to the uh, pole mount. But I just hold it there, and then once I've got it up there, it allowed me to get my screw into place. And uh, once I've got the first two in, it's all positioned pretty well, and I can tighten the rest up. Be back in a sec. So there we have it. We're all buttoned up again. And now there's no, there's no nothing between my LEDs. So again, be very careful. You stick your hand in there. Expect to get bitten. There is electricity in there after all. So uh, that's not somewhere I anticipate putting my hand. If I do, I'll accept the fact that I've been stupid and I'll get an electrical shock to teach me enough not to be so stupid again. So, uh, one note, when you're, when you're working with these grow lights, I'd highly recommend you buy yourself a set of these uh, filtered eyeglasses. They uh, run about $10 on Amazon or eBay, wherever you want to buy them. And uh, it just saves your eyes. There's some fairly uh, strong light frequencies coming out of these things. And you don't want to burn your eyes, you only get one set in a lifetime. Alright, so we'll... Alright, so the moment of truth. Let's see if we've got working light. And as you can see, I do indeed. And you can see, uh, maybe you can, maybe you can't. Uh, but I, I, with my lenses on, and in fact what I'll do is I will take... I'll look away, and perhaps use my lens over the over the camera see if you can see the different frequencies but there is definitely two different lights there we've got a bluish light we've got a bluish light and reddish lights for the two different frequencies and uh, now I've got the full power of those LEDs with nothing uh, unadulterated going bareback, shining on my plants. Uh, I must mention that uh, I'm going to have to give uh, give uh, a mention to the gentleman that uh, gave me this idea. The gentleman's name is uh, the Grow Boss. Um, he's got some really good tips on how to do uh, soil pH balances, what's important in the grow, what's not important. How to maximize your yield and uh, a lot of other good things and he has a book which I've been working my way through and one of the first things he mentioned is when you're using lights you want to remove the glass because nothing uh, generates heat faster than the glass over light and there's only one thing that can be doing and that's pulling energy away from the bulbs 
which you want in your plant, not in a piece of glass generating heat. So, um, dibs to uh, the grow boss. I'd say his uh, book is worth the money. Uh, you can find him on uh, YouTube. Uh, he grows um, some quite interesting looking tomatoes and uh, what I can only assume must be some form of um, of um, hop, I think. Yeah, very strange looking. But uh, he seems to have some uh, good results from what he says and uh, a lot of people have reviewed him and uh, believe that... Uh, He's the real deal, and uh, so far his advice seems to have been sound, so I'd recommend uh, you check out the Grow Boss, and uh, this was the uh, inspiration for my idea of pulling out the uh, glass that was in this LED. LEDs are obviously a much cheaper substitute for the high pressure lights that you can use, which uh, obviously they're optimal, but they suck the most amount of electricity, generate the most heat, two things that in my growing environment that I can't do so uh, I'm trying to do this exclusive with the LED lights this one here is supposed to throw the equivalent of a thousand watt light lamp it uses hundred and thirty um, watts of power um, it was generated a bit of heat I'm hoping it will generate a bit less now without that glass in it um, and so far my plants certainly have germinated and uh, are doing fairly well under it and I'm also now following his advice of giving a good eight hours of night time to allow the root systems to grow. Apparently uh, during the night you want to have darkness and that will allow the roots to grow as it takes the sugar from the leaf into the root. And um, so yeah, so thank you Growboss and uh, that's the end of this video. Thank you.